Well, R.J. Simpson is the Premier of the Northwest Territories. Premier Simpson joins us now. Premier, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. So you're uh, just a week into the job already. You're making national headlines by saying the federal government should give a carbon exemption to the whole of NWT. Why are you making that argument? Well, that's actually been the, uh, the position of the government of the Northwest Territories since day one, since the carbon tax was introduced. Um, you know, the fact is that in the Northwest Territories, we already have, we already pay higher costs than anywhere in Canada for, um, you know, for, for fuel, for power. And so if increased costs were what was going to uh, move us towards green technology and uh, green energy, we would have been the first ones in Canada to do that. Um, but the fact is the technology isn't at a place yet um, where we can fully utilize it. And we are not, we don't have the infrastructure in place to take advantage of, of things. So we don't have most of our communities connected to a hydro grid. Um, they're, they're primarily uh, run off diesel generated power plants. And our territories, 1.3 million square kilometers, 33 communities, many of them not connected by roads, uh, let alone power lines. And so we just don't have the ability to, to do that, make that transition on our own. And so the carbon tax is not really um, like serving the purpose here in the north. Mm -hmm. Now, the federal conservatives have latched on to, to the comment and the argument that you're making here and using it to push essentially for the carbon tax to be dropped altogether. How do you feel about that? You know, here in the territories, we are a nonpartisan government. We're all elected as individuals, um, independents rather, and we come together and uh, we put forward our priorities uh, as a collective based on the needs and the wants of the territory. And so I don't, uh, I don't really get involved in party politics. Uh, we work with whoever uh, happens to be in power. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I do wonder, though, because as you say, you work who's ever in power. The, the, the issue, or rather the argument you're making regarding the carbon tax goes to an issue of affordability. So when you hear the Trudeau government announce measures uh, to address other issues like housing, like groceries, uh, the environment for that matter, do you feel it's sensitive enough, sensitive enough rather, to your territory's concerns? Uh, I guess it's difficult to roll out a national policy that really pays enough attention to the Northwest Territories, um, and really all three of the territories. We are very unique and very different from Southern Canada. Of course, the population is, is the biggest thing. Um, most residents of, of Canada live within a couple hundred kilometers of the U.S. border. Um, and the further north you go, the more sparsely populated it is. And so that, that's the position we're in. We also don't have the, the infrastructure that exists and has existed for many years in Southern Canada. So uh, we also have unique dynamics, many small communities. Um, we're, we're an indigenous territory. So we always try to work with the, the federal government to tailor programs for the North because a solution that was going to work for um, the 10 provinces, just they generally don't work for the territories. Mm -hmm. uh, have you had a chance to speak with the prime minister since being selected premier? Um, not yet, but uh, I, I know a call is coming. Okay, so a call is coming. Uh, also coming is the Legislative Assembly, because that doesn't get together until January, to my understanding. And I realize that is when you'll actually decide priorities for NWT. But already, y y you've talked about ensuring people in the territory uh, feeling better supported by the government. What, what do you mean by that? How do you define better supported? Uh, well, I guess um, uh, in a couple of ways. I, I'll start with um, the fact that the territory, like, like many places in Canada and the world, um, but in particular in the territory, has experienced significant natural disasters over the last couple of years. Um, two years ago, we had the biggest, at the time, the biggest natural disaster in the territory, a flood that impacted my community. Um, this year, of course, we had the, the wildfires that uh, I think everyone in Canada should be familiar with, given the coverage. Um, and I was out of my home personally for two months this year. I was evacuated. I was evacuated last year as well. And so, we have a situation where the public is, you know, is concerned about just their safety. And at the bare minimum, the government needs to provide a safe and secure environment for people. So we have a lot of work to do to, to show the public that we are supporting them in that way. Yeah, supporting them in that way. And where does Ottawa fit into that? When you talk about hard to carve national policies, when it comes to a territorial policy, where does Ottawa fit into this idea of making people feel better supported? Uh, well, again, it, it's it's those uh, tailoring those programs to the north, and really, I mean, it, it, a lot of it comes down to the funding. So we don't have the the, the population base 
you know, the industries to, to generate that tax revenue, to move forward with a lot of the big infrastructure projects that we need, um, including ones that are related to emergency preparedness, such as berms to prevent um, uh, flooding, a lot of the work that needs to be done to protect communities from fires. And so we really need to work with the, with the federal government to, to bring some of those resources in the north. Mm -hmm. Now, you've also said that when it comes to, to another matter here, reconciliation and land claims, it is possible to get more things done in the next four years than what we've seen in the last 25. What exactly are you referring to there? What do you think you can accomplish in the next four years? So we have some land claims that have been ongoing for you know, almost my entire life, um, some 25, 35 years, uh, these negotiations. And there is a really strong desire in the territory to move ahead and conclude some of these. And I think that uh, given the, the shift in um, the attitudes in, in the population, that uh, we can you know, make some changes to how we operate as a government and uh, really make a lot of progress to, to settle these. Most of our, uh, traditionally, most of the legislators in the territory are Indigenous, so they really have skin in the game. And there, there's a really a real willingness to um, perhaps go down avenues that we haven't gone down before. And the reason that I, that I say that is, I always think about the future. So if we look 50 years in the future, the Northwest Territories is, is going to look much different and it's going to be very unique. We have a number of Indigenous governments who are working towards self-government and they will get there. And so we're going to have a patchwork of uh, Indigenous self-governing nations working in conjunction with the government of the Northwest Territories. And so why not work towards that future now? Um, we're not, we don't need to develop programs just for the government of the Northwest Territories. We need to develop programs that um, the Indigenous governments are going to want to assume responsibility for. And, you know, I don't think there's any need to be scared of that. There's no need to try and hold on to power. I mean, the future is inevitable, and I think that uh, everyone realizes that now. Well, without a doubt, we'll be watching. Uh, Premier, really appreciate the conversation today. Thank you for that. Thank you for having me. And that's Premier Simpson.